Hi, I'm Buzz Vance with Nebraska Department of Ag. Uh, much of my life I've been a beekeeper and today we're at one of my bee arts. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, pollinators. Um, we, Nebraska has a lot of native pollinators and they spend a lot of their time in habitats such as CRP acres or like what we have here, uh, tree lines uh, where they can live undisturbed. Uh, beekeepers also use uh, tree lines. Uh, they're great for winter protection from the wind. In the spring, they provide a lot of nectar and pollen to the bees, and then in the summer shade. So uh, the tree lines are important to both native and domestic uh, bees. Uh, you've probably heard in the news um, about the number of bee colonies that we're losing across the country every year, 25 to 35 percent of our bee colonies. Um, it is a complex issue, but uh, if we just put it under stress, uh, we have a parasitic varroa mite that causes a lot of stress to bee colonies, uh, very prevalent. And those uh, varroa mites carry a half a dozen different viruses uh, that also cause stress to the bee colonies. Um, we have issues with uh, diet. Uh, you may not think of uh, fungicides, but we have fungicides that will kill the uh, flora in a bee gut and make it difficult for bees to digest their food, and that's a stressor. Uh, 2012 we had drought as a stress. So we've got a number of factors that cause uh, stress to bees and that is all factoring into uh, what's happening to them. Uh, you might have also heard about a new class of uh, insecticides called the neonicotinoids. Uh, they're very commonly used, uh, very prevalent and very much so in the seed treatments. And uh, one of the incidents that we're having problems with is uh, at planting time. Um, the, uh, if you're using a pneumatic planter and you're in no-till situation, um, that pneumatic planter gives off some of the dust talc lubricant as well as some of the seed coating as it's passing through the field. And if you've got purple henbit in bloom in that site at the same time, uh, the bees absolutely love the henbit and they're going to be out in the field the same time you're planting and they'll come into contact with that dust, they'll take it back to the hive, and because they're a social insect, uh, the whole colony uh, can die from that. So, you know, what can uh, farmers do to help our pollinators? Um, one of the things is uh, if you have purple handbit growing in your cornfield uh, before planting, I'd encourage you a couple days beforehand to use a burn down herbicide, uh, clear the field so that the bees aren't going to be in there at the same time that you're planting your seed. Um, I'd encourage you to, uh, uh, during the rest of the spray season with your insecticides and fungicides, to try to avoid the uh, middle part of the day when the bees are most active, spray in the morning, spray in the evening. Um, and then uh, and would encourage you to leave your tree lines in place, especially for the native uh, bees. Uh, I see a lot of those being torn up and would like to see those uh, left alone for the bees' sake. I would encourage you to uh, check with the Driftwatch website, uh, be finding where uh, beekeepers may be having bees in your area, or talk with neighbors to make sure you understand where honeybees are so that you don't have problems with drift there. Uh, let's all do our part to make sure that we have pollinators around. Thank you. Hello, my name is Craig Romery with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture and we're going to be talking about Driftwatch today. Driftwatch is a national website that displays pesticide sensitive crops and the web address is www.driftwatch.org and if you go to the website you'll see this screen where it shows a national map with about nine states that are uh, involved and if you click on the Nebraska map, it'll take you to the Nebraska page where there is information on the header bar on sensitive crops, information for applicators. Uh, you can access the maps and take a look at the user's guide. And if you click on the state outline, it'll bring up the Google map, which displays all of the pesticide sensitive crops. And the legend on the right hand side these are the crops that are shown in Nebraska. So you can see we have beehives, organic, uh, fruits and vegetables, greenhouses, uh, orchards, etc. And Google Maps is pretty easy. You just click and pan around or you can zoom in.
to the area you want, or you can type in the town or a zip code here to zoom in to that specific place. And you can see the outlines of the fields and the farms that are located in your area. Another good feature for applicators, if you click on the applicators button at the top, it allows you to register your information, your contact information, and as well as your email address. And when new sensitive crops are, are added to the area that you select, you will get an email notification that that information has been added. So uh, you don't have to uh, go to it every day, although it wouldn't be a bad idea to do so uh, quite frequently. But uh, you can also, because it's a national map, you can go to the, the map and you can see the other states that are there. So if you're an aerial applicator or located along the border, uh, that may be helpful to you. And when you're out in the field, you will likely run across some of these drift watch signs. Uh, the growers are getting these after they get approved to the website and they're putting these along their fields. So you'll see them along the roads and fence lines and it's just another indi indicator for you to, to be aware of what, what's across the fence. So I encourage you to go to the website and check it out and if you have any questions you can contact us. Thank you.